And if we were going to draw a diagram about these rich, white, right-wing financiers who are putting money into buying buses or renting buses to bring these folks here, subsidizing their hotel stay, are these folks just ideologues and they see these folks, again, as useful idiots? Are they true believers? Because when you start talking about, quote, unquote, the ruling class, you know, the old word power elite, well, there are factions there, too. In the same way that the business eats back the Nazi party. This isn't new. The business elites have been backing the Christian right for decades. And they look at them all as yahoos and buffoons in the same way that Krupp and all of the big titans of German industry looked at the Nazis as buffoons. But they know that they will not ram through any measures that will impede their efforts to amass ever greater profits. They recognize that once the Nazis were in power, labor unions would not exist. Indeed, competing political parties wouldn't exist. So there's a kind of economic self-interest on the part of the ruling elites. Betsy DeVos and all these figures, I mean, she's long funded this kind of stuff out of the Christian right. I mean, there's even ties to some of her, the nonprofits that are connected to her, to these militias that try to kidnap the governor of Michigan, etc. So you see it with the deep uh, animus towards Bernie Sanders, who on the political spectrum is not particularly radical, but he actually talked about the the pillage that was being carried out by the ruling elites. And so they will, in times of social unrest, inevitably gravitate towards fascistic extremists who they know will economically not only safeguard, but actually carry out measures that will increase their ability to consolidate wealth. So that's what we're seeing. That's why Purdue and the family that owns Walmart, and that's why they've been funding the Christian right for years and years and years. And that's why the Christian right has so much money and has created these parallel institutions, these parallel law schools, Patrick Henry and Liberty University and media systems and everything else. The ruling elite sees in this movement, it knows that neoliberalism has lost its credibility, it never made economic sense, as David Harvey has pointed out. And his great book, A Brief History of Neoliberalism, it was always kind of quack economic theory, but it gave a kind of ideological cover to the consolidation of wealth and power by a very tiny ruling class. But that doesn't have credibility anymore across the political spectrum. And so, and this is also what happened in Weimar, because people forget that there were massive austerity programs after the 1929 crash put in place by the self defined liberal government, and the Nazi party was polling at in the single digits in 1928. And then you had von Papen, this aristocrat, form a government in 1932, who reminds me very much of Joe Biden, who wants to recreate the old ancien regime, this kind of conservative utopianism, which was impossible and which is also going to be impossible for Biden, which accelerates the kind of disintegration into fascism. And, and the ruling elites, capitalist societies, and history has borne this out, will inevitably, with some distaste, because they do look at these people as outliers, given the alternative, they will always back the fascist. So when you bring up this point about people funding, subsidizing hotel rooms and, or paying for buses, that's exactly what we're seeing.